make certain that you understood the energy that was running the radio. So I wanted you to hear it. So everybody's going to say, well, how can we run the oscillator um, off this device with, that, with its own internal battery? Okay. There, there is one scheme that you can use. You can wait for this to switch and then you can pick this up with an optocoupler. You can steal a little bit of this, pick it up with an optocoupler and transfer some of that energy to your battery. So you would, you would wait for this one side to switch and I think it's actually depicted in in this thing. It's actually de depicted in this drawing right here, in the original drawing, of how you switch that. So, so this, excuse me, this is your original drawing? Yes, the original drawing, which we'll, we'll make available so that they can get ideas from it. We're not saying follow this. We're saying go with the opto switching because it's a little bit difficult to use all these transformers and get them all phased right. If you don't phase these transformers right, then you get you get switching that's not right and then you're going to come back and you're going to say, "Well, we built the whole thing, but it didn't work." It's because something that you did is wrong. You know, when, when it's as clear as this on the blackboard and how you do it, you can't make a mistake. This is the way that it's hooked up. You know, if you think, well, I think, well, maybe I'll go in my junk box and get this diode and I'll find another junky diode and put it in over here and another junky diode and put it in over here. It's not going to work. You're not going to get any energy out of this system at all. What's going to happen is this drop's going to be different than this drop, and this drop's going to be different than this drop, and then you're going to write me an email and you're going to say, well, I built it and it didn't work. And I'm going to refer back to the movie and say, it does work. Because it's running here. So, the other thing that I want to bring up is, it is covered under our U.S. patent, on the potential charger, uh, which was for charging batteries. Uh, basically, that's, if you look at the claims, the claims are, cover this exact switching methodology with capacitors and batteries, and also covers the solar end. This, become, this can be a very good a solar oscillator if you want to run it from the sun. It would work very well for doing that for charging batteries, you know, and it would charge all the batteries if you did it. You could actually do that with the sun. And uh, the other thing I want to bring up is, I think that everybody owes quite a bit of gratitude to Tom Bearden for all this because if it wouldn't have been for Tom Bearden, this whole field would have never even gotten started. Tom Bearden actually started this field with, by, pick, by doing all the research work for everybody out there that's in the free energy community. And, and uh, what I think is, uh, in my own mind, is I would have never done this if it wouldn't have been for Tom Bearden. And everybody can say, well, we don't agree with Tom Bearden's theories, but has anybody really ever done the research like Tom Bearden? Have they done the discovery method? Have they tried the circuits or did they change them? Well, for 25 years, the Tesla switch has been in a book. And to this day, I haven't seen any Tesla switches out there. I have never seen it on YouTube. I've never seen anybody report anything except for what's written in the book. So anyway, what I'm going to uh, point out here is Tom Bearden. And Tom Bearden was very unique in, in his research. And always could go to a book and pick out 
the missing chapter in some form of energy. Do you know when and, Tom started the research on all this? Oh, Tom started this probably right after he got out of the military. Well, it's in, it's, always, in, it's in his original master's thesis. Yes, it is. In the, in the 40s. Quito and physics. Believe me, everybody that's listening to John rant right at this very moment, Tom Bearden does deserve the Nobel Prize for his research work. And what Tom always said is if you take little bitty pulses and you just build them up like this, and, and just before the current can flow, so that what you're doing is you're just building up the potential like this, that once it's up here at this potential of 100 volts, by, by doing this, you're charging some kind of a capacitor. All right? The symbol for a capacitor. And then once you do that, and you take this portion of it away, so that it's totally disconnected from it, and then you take this portion of the capacitor and you move it over to your battery with this switch that you dump this capacitor across the battery and what you get then is you get a sharp spike across the battery. Well, he's tried to point out for years, and nobody took Tom Bearden seriously, that it's this little spike that contains all the knowledge of the universe. So that when this little spike gets into this little chemical battery right here, the battery recharges itself. It keeps going. It's told what to do. And then Tom Bearden says, very conveniently, if you take this switch and it's disconnected again, and this ramp then builds up very slowly without any current to that potential again, that then you disconnect this again and you hit this switch again and you dump this across the battery and you get this spike. Now you, dis you do this again, you keep going back and forth like this, back and forth like this, back and forth like this. Pretty soon this battery is boiling because it's being charged with a potential charge which is going, and Tom always used to say, the battery looks like this inside. And the electrons, well, we don't know that there's any electrons. I've never found one on the bench. I can't see one. I can't see anything on the bench except for what, what, these, what these waves do. But Tom depicted that the, the ions are big, like this red dot. And they're just sitting here. Hundreds of them, thousands of them. Those are battery plates, the square things are yeah. battery plates. Yes, those are the battery plates. Now, Tom said, you hit this with a potential charge, there's no current involved because as soon as the potential charge hits it, electrons start to pile up around, and that's the blue, and it keeps piling up until the ion 
moves that direction to recharge the battery. So, if you have all this potential and you have this signal that hits the battery, what keeps happening to the ions is they keep recharging the battery without any force. See, they move very slowly, but the battery sort of recharges itself. And that's what the difference is between Tom Bearden and people that I call current pushers, that do everything just by the book. You know, we don't want to use current. John does not use current to do any of this. If we're working with this, we don't want to use any current because the current in the circuit is the thing that gets the, everything hot. If you come over, and if you just came over here, Pat, and touch one of these devices, you'll see it's colder than the air. Oh yeah, it is. That's negative energy. So we don't want to use any current. We just want to use this little spike to move the ions in the battery back and forth. So once the, bat once the ions move in the battery, the battery recharges itself and then we can take this back. So if you really think about it, the Tesla switch, I named it the Tesla switch. Nobody named it the Tesla switch. John named it the Tesla switch. And why, why did you invoke I named it the Tesla switch because Tesla in, in all the patents that I've ever read on Tesla and some unique papers that are mystical on the internet, you don't know, you know for a fact that Tesla didn't, didn't say that, you know, and you know that Tesla always was opposed to anything with current. He always used high potentials. He didn't, didn't care about the current. That wasn't the thing that did the magic, it was the high potentials that he, that he placed on things. And so, this is why we go back and we say that Tom Bearden was absolutely right if we took this little oscillator and we made it just go up until it reached the point we wanted to, at which point this would be charged. And then we hit this switch, 